I'm Roy. I'm an electrical engineer. Many people regard me as an inventor. The things I have invented would make a very, very long list. I did the grid structure on whatever battery that you have in your car, the main power supply for the Voyager spacecraft. I hooked up China with the Middle East for uh, oil supply. Many historians credit an invention that I've made with the United States winning the Cold War. I have almost 160 acres, primarily of redwoods. This is my outside workshop. Many of the things here, for example, the cars and a lot of electronic parts are the basis for making other inventions, their ingredients to work with. I lost count of the number of vehicles I have. I'm Marlena and Roy is my boyfriend. I actually met Roy about six years after he purchased his property. I knew he was a hoarder, and that was his property, and he could do with it what he wished. And this was his place where he could play. I purchased the land in 1984. One reason was to preserve the redwoods. The other reason was to have a place to work on electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles and do energy-saving inventions. His land has gotten out of control. There's just too many cars and too many vehicles. Too much junk. My name's Jim. I'm Roy's attorney. The county of Santa Cruz filed a legal action in the Superior Court against him, seeking fines and seeking to get the vehicles removed. They are seeking more in monetary fines than he can afford to pay. So we're trying to reduce the amount of fines. I think if Roy's cooperative with the county and basically cleans up his property, we can get through this legal mess. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Corey Chalmers. I'm an extreme hoarding cleanup specialist. We're here today to help Roy, who's faced with a pretty serious crisis. Roy has the county coming down on him with some huge fines. We have a few problems logistically. Right now, we have severe rain that's supposed to be here for two or three days. Obviously, the weather is not nice. I know it's not going to be easy, but we all got to kind of just button down and make this happen, despite the mud, the rain, the hail, and possible lightning and thunder that's supposed to come in today. We have multiple tow trucks coming. We have flatbeds coming. We even have a bulldozer that's going to come and crush these vehicles. But if we're getting stuck every time we go down this muddy driveway and have to pull it out with winches and tractors and stuff, you can imagine 60-something cars is not going to happen anytime soon. What about the Dodge van back there? Keep that. The Mustang over there? Keep it. The dump truck? Keep. All right. So these yes. are going to stay? Yes. But this one is going to get crushed? Uh, that one will get crushed, yes. You want to see if you can put a big old C on it for crush? <sighs> this Hopefully is, the paint will stick on the wet window. This is the big C. Perfect. How's that feel? All right, good. Now, if we can just do that a few dozen more times, we'll all be happy, and so will the county. Immediately, we run into a problem with all this mud because of all the heavy rain that we've had. Right now, every vehicle is getting stuck in this mud, even the tow truck. Ah, that's what I was afraid of. That chain bus. So we're at a standstill. We're going to bring some gravel in and see if that doesn't give us a little bit of traction to get through here. How about yeah. this? It, it stays. OK, is that really usable? Probably. Are you saving pretty much all these metal things? 
I am tending to. My name is Dr. Robin Zazio. I am a licensed clinical psychologist, and I specialize in OCD and compulsive hoarding. Once we did get started, Roy had a difficult time making decisions. OK, those tapes are not good. Those are all wet. You can't use those tapes, Roy. Those are all wet and, and moldy and mildew inside. Can this go? Yeah, the, the school next door could use it. All right. A broken, what is this? It's an industrial mixer. OK. No, you cannot problem. use this. This is <sighs> To him, all of this stuff has an unsurpassable value. You know, everything is amazing and unique and important. This is potentially useful for doing some weird something. OK, Roy. The gravel just got delivered. This is all we could get today. I don't think it's going to be enough to cover all the areas we needed to. Yes, we're golden. So do me a favor. You point out what they can throw in the truck right now for the, for the landfill. Well, we had only about a half an hour to work with Roy today, but we did find out he's not going to get rid of a lot of stuff easily. I think he can probably do that. Is that food? It's food. So why is there even a, a thought about if we should keep that or not? There's, it's probably still good, but it's not worth the risk. It, you know. Here, put that on the truck. You can do it. Well. There you go, number one. It's the start of a new beginning, Roy. We've lost most of a day today. We've got two days left. We've got a tremendous amount of work to do. Roy has so much stuff on his property. And then we get this weather and all the problems with the trucks getting in and out. You know, this is probably the hardest one that I've been on, and I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. I don't have high expectations at all. So we got out here today, it's pouring rain again. The mud is obviously even worse than it was. Luckily for us, we got access to an excavator. It is making quick work of these vehicles. So now we're trying to motivate Roy to let go of even more so we can get his property cleared. Any of these cars, can any of these ones go, Roy? No. You're gonna keep them on the property? Yeah. Unless we can convince him otherwise. We have had to push and push and push and continue to remind him that he's got a major crisis still in front of him. So let's You're in just... court next week, right? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You're in court tomorrow. Yeah, we just discovered that Roy has a court date tomorrow. This is, he has every opportunity to change this right now. Can I please take that Subaru and crush it and uh, toy the minivan with the door missing? Okay. I can't even legally tow it. So can I take both of those cars and get them out of your way? Because that'll open up the road. OK. I can have them? Yeah. I'll take one last look inside. Today, we kind of had a breakthrough with him. You now he started to make decisions on his own. Family put pressure on him, we put pressure on him. I'm hoping he'll continue this. Hey, Roy, guess what time it is? You're gonna be at the controls of this one. Can you do it? Okay. We just really wanted Roy to get in there, crush one of these vehicles that he's been sitting on for years, and let him get the feeling, you know what, that it's not that bad to get rid of it. Hopefully that motivated him. Hopefully he picked up his spirit a little bit, and we're going to get rocking on this thing and get him in court tomorrow and have him off his back. Having a sense of control made me feel a little bit better. The fun was more in operating machinery than in doing the crushing. 48 more times, and we're golden. <laughs> We're at the end of the day, and we're not even close to what we wanted to accomplish. We used to have a tremendous amount of clutter. I'm concerned that once we leave, this is going to stay here. 
And you have a court date tomorrow. Right. But at least I can show a lot of progress. Yeah. So in total today, we removed 16 vehicles, two travel trailers, and seven dump trucks, totaling probably 7,000 pounds altogether. It might buy him a little bit of time, but in the long run, he's probably never going to clear all this stuff off the property, and he's going to fight the county until they either take his land away or he dies doing so. I'm not happy about the idea of having to clean up this land myself with my siblings' help if my dad doesn't do it. You still have probably 15 vehicles down here, buses, motorhomes. I have my own reasons for wanting to hang on to things. I feel sad about losing a lot of items, a lot of vehicles. Well, it's the end of the job. You know, just to top things off, the truck just left with all the vehicles on it, and it tips over as soon as it pulls out. So I think they put a little too many cars in it. There's probably one too many. Now we have to call a tow truck out to pick it all up and get them all back in there. You know, this has been the worst job I've been on, and this just topped it. This is the icing on the cake. We've tried everything that we can, and hopefully he will gather some resources together and make it happen. We can, we can only hope. I'm Cindy. I'm a former model, actress, real estate agent, insurance agent, and I collect a lot of stuff. Outside the house, I have cars, trucks, SUVs, RVs, antiques. I have lawnmowers. I've got a concession trailer, diesel trailers. You name it, I've got it out there. I've got everything. I'm Cody, and I'm Cindy's son. On the outside of the house, it's a lot of state sales that she's accumulated over the years. So there's trailers loaded down that's probably been loaded down for over 15 years that she hasn't dealt with. A lot of stuff. The property is in my mom's name. I was 17 when I bought the property. And so in the state of Mississippi, it's my understanding that you have to be 18 to purchase a property and have it in your name. So the property is my property, but it's in her name. That's the reason that I think that she feels like things can be out there. It's been going on for so long, and the county has been out there, and they said, you have to clean it up. And then they said, you can't bring anything else out there, and she's steadily bringing more things out there. Taking on more stuff, and it's just not getting her anywhere. We're not moving forward. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Matt Paxton. I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. You guys ready to do this? Yep. yep. All, right. All right, everybody, everybody in. in. Come on. On three. One, two, three. Let's do it. Yay! I'm okay either way. Okay, let's throw it away. I mean, it's probably antique. It's worth something, but I don't care. At this point, Yay. I got Hitler beside me. There was a few minutes of hope. Cindy really hustled, and we filled a dumpster in an hour. He's offering a thousand bucks for the truck. I am encouraging you to take it. Okay. And because he we got his phone number, we can let him know. Is it best? Is it ideal? No. Is it something? It's something. We finally got an offer from somebody that showed up, and Cindy turned it down. So end of day two, we're right back where we started. All the cars are here, and we got no money in our pocket.
we have a new offer. All right, for everything here, God would give you $15,000 cash today. And everything would go away. If you're talking about all the RVs, I've got... All the RVs, I mean, everything. Everything. Everything we see that, behind us, it would all go. Yeah, I know. I don't, I, that's not good for me. This is not working. Nothing's working. We've had offers, and they've all been turned down, and everyone that Cindy says is going to make offers hasn't showed up. I don't even know what we're doing anymore. This is good. They're like $5 piece on this. Okay, this this is yeah, savable. Save, OK. These are good. These are brand, these are like, these are good. That horse is about a $120 horse. I don't know who's going to buy that. I don't know. I, I, it's worth saving. What are you guys doing in here? Amber, what are y'all doing? Uh, Cindy, we're cleaning up. All right. Amber, y'all you, know I've got, be, I've got to be here to decide what to do. OK, let's get the boxes. OK. Now, now hold on a minute. Okay, okay. Now I'm getting mad. I'm getting what, mad What now. are you getting mad about, Cindy? What are you getting mad about? Why are you getting mad? What, what, what's going on here? That's the stuff that was right there. Didn't you say that that could go? No, I didn't say that could go. Where that comes from, the slab right Oh, my god. They're separating it, Cindy. I they're need just... to separate. Dee, there's only going through it twice. There's a bunch of good stuff on there. You want to come back up here and let's start getting some of these other ones out? I see you down there now. Yeah, let's get this, uh, this these cobalts out of here. This is all trash. And no one buys wicker anymore. That's the problem. It's trash and nobody buys it. Cindy, pace yourself. Can we toss this? Yes. Okay. That's fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. She finally said, you can clean the empty room if I'm not in here. I don't need to clean the empty room. I need to clean the full one. And uh, she's not interested in that. She's got to be there for that. We're going to clean as quickly as we can to make it a little safe. We have found a bed that I can set up for her. Hopefully, that'll be a little nicer for her. But I mean, there's only so much we can do. Y'all, come here, everybody. Cody, you too, man. All right, crazy day. You too, Cindy. Come on. Very crazy day. There's people walking behind us and in front of us. They're still pulling cars. People from the city were here. They saw you working. They saw you really, really trying. And they're going to see what continues to happen. You need to stay at this pace, yeah. and you need to keep going. We're right around 50,000 pounds of trash, probably another 20,000 pounds of scrap metal, 10 cars and two pickups. It's a lot for most people. That's all out of the backyard. We got double that still in the yard. But they did a lot. We need to appreciate it. You guys put your things aside, and you worked hard today. And I'm proud of both of you. Thank right? you. Both of you. Thank you. You're good people. This is not the end. This is the beginning. Mm -hmm. You're just getting started. Let's go inside and see okay. what we got in there, OK? OK. Let's go. Wow. What are you thinking? I'm thinking the rest of the I'm speechless five <laughs> girls and the nieces can come over here and uh, everybody take turns and take a day and help Cindy. You have the energy, you have the ability, and you have the family. Sure, sure. This is what so many of our clients, they don't have the family mm -hmm. support, mm -hmm. and you have it. You got good people. And so I don't feel that bad leaving. I don't like to leave a house no, in good. this state. No, we're good. But you're, you're, you're going to be fine. I like it. OK. 
Okay. I think we have one other. I think we have one other space to show you. Wow. It's a different place. Oh my gosh. Smells good in here too. Smells clean. Yeah, it does. A lot different. Can I say the night we? What are you thinking? Obviously, it's just a mattress on the floor. Sure, sure. It's not great, but it's better. Oh, it's, it's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. We got to roll. Family is the key to keeping this place clean. And you got it. Right. OK? Mm -hmm. Keep the family together. You'll be fine. I'm planning on going to aftercare therapy to help me control the things that I bring in and try to avoid getting myself in this situation again, one step at a time. My name is Paul Hammond. I'm 56 years old. My junkie Dolphus. I've been collecting junk for quite a while. I've got a little bit of everything here. Quite a few vehicles, a lot of refrigerators, stoves, uh, used appliances, some scrap metal, stuff I've collected uh, over the years. I'm Paul Hammond, Jr. I'm Paul's son. Uh, when you first pull up to the yard, uh, you kind of round a corner, and when you get get there, you can start seeing his junk collection. I mean, that's the best way to put it on that aspect. I guess um, hoarding uh, is one of the definitions of what I do. I, my intentions were to, most of it, uh, scrap metal, just to haul it off and make a little bit of money. Uh, part of my problem is when I did start collecting stuff, I didn't want to get rid of it. And it's gotten overwhelming to the point that uh, sometimes it's difficult to think about it. system got involved uh, a couple years ago. There's two people in the neighborhood that actually started it. I uh, know who they are. One is an old lady across the street. They have nothing but time on their hands. I'm Mary Alice Adams. I live across the street from Paul. It's just the eye soul to the neighborhood. Everybody in the neighborhood would like to see it cleaned up. I watched this for the last year or two, several years, just grow into nothing but a junkyard. And I don't think this subdivision was laid out to have junkyards in it. Basically, they called him repeatedly to actually get the county on his butt. Finally, some commissioner took notice in it, and now they're doing something about it. And I'm glad they are. And he didn't care. That was his attitude when I asked him what he was doing. He says, it's my property. I do what I want to with it. And I says, well, I don't think the law works that way, but we'll see. I see my grandkids uh, just about every day. Um, I usually go over there in the afternoons. Usually it's Sundays, he grabs uh, one or two of my my kids and he goes out dumpster hopping. It's something he can do with the kids, they enjoy it. Yep. They enjoy helping their grandpa do anything he can. Thank you, buddy. I enjoy being with them. Two snacks. Yeah. My yeah. grandkids have... Uh, been about the only thing I really look forward to every day in the last few years. Pretty much uh, the rest of everything else I do has become a problem in my life. Matt Paxton. I'm the owner of Clutter Cleaner. Uh, we are a company that specializes in homes that have been affected by hoarding, addiction, and grief. Good morning. Good thank morning. you. Good morning. Thank you guys for coming. We got a lot of work to do today. You guys are picking up the trash. If there's any scrap metal, leave it. 
We got three days to do it. The house way over there. That's where we're going. All right, let's do it. All right. Got uh, about four different crews all around the, the yard, hitting four different corners. They're gonna walk slowly towards the house as they pick trash out from all the scrap metal. Our main concerns will be sheer volume. There's just a lot of a lot of work to do with not a whole lot of time to do it. Um, we will watch some anxiety levels of Paul Senior. He's gonna he's gonna get nervous throughout the day. So we'll make sure he maintains control throughout the entire process. Pace yourself today. That's very important. You gotta pace it. I mean, we're all wheezing already. We got one load. We probably got to do four more loads of this today. But we got to pace ourselves. That's not as hard, huh? Uh-huh. I'm not as young as I used to be. Uh, one good hard day's work, it takes me two to recuperate. And uh, that's definitely a problem, trying to get it done in time. Quick. <laughs> Well, they got a couple plastic boxes and stuff, which That's are right. usable. Yeah, but we gotta let it go, man. Is it usable? Yes. Do we have time to keep it? No. Walked away from that dumpster. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you do that? Why'd you decide to just walk away? Need to. Don't want to. Need to. Yeah. Sorry. Good job. <laughs> Good job. It's even lower than I thought it was going to be. Oh, so. 60 not unreasonable. No, he wanted 10. Huh? I said no thanks. Penny a pound. Penny a pound, then. That damn low? The problem with Paul here now is he has been offered a pretty, in his mind, a bad offer. He is really, really upset. I ain't giving my stuff away. I ain't going to do it. I can't. Wait. Oh, uh, fight with the downtown. Yeah. I, he can play his game I, if he wants to, but I'm not giving my that. stuff away. I understand I can't. that. I know, I know you can't, and I understand that. The company that uh, knows the judge, they give me half a cent a pound. <laughs> Where I can get four and a half cents a pound if I do it myself. Scrap metal is worth nothing right now, but what the company is offering <laughs> is even less than nothing, almost. He is shell shocked. He's very upset. He really admitted this morning that the only reason he keeps this stuff is for his grandkids and for their life savings. And so that's what he's going through mentally. It's not that he's greedy and wants the money. He's going through, holy cow, I can't support my four grandkids. Tie your shoes, sweetie. It's hard to explain. went as far as we could on the push. Now it's just support, straight up support. We're gonna do whatever he needs to do. We're gonna hustle. I'm concerned about their energy level and their ability to continue to work. We also have uh, kind of some far equipment you'll see behind me. It may or may not work. We're not gonna know till tomorrow night if he's going to jail or not. It's gonna be a long day. Yep. Yeah, this is just a paperwork to prove that the cars aren't stolen. <laughs> so what this is. Hopefully today I can get at least the cars that's out by the road out of here. Um, maybe a couple more. All of this stuff here can go right into the scrap. Oh, that's aluminum and copper. That little bit right there is worth more than a couple of cars. The aluminum. We can't leave it there over the weekend. It has to go. I just think it needs to go with the cars and the scrap metal. It can't. I mean, it's worth 10 times what the other stuff is. So it's going to have to go in the back somewhere in maybe six months. If price comes up, I'll even get more for it. This is very valuable. All this copper right here is extremely valuable. But if you're in jail, it's not valuable. We gotta fill it by 3.30 regardless, man. We don't fill it. They're taking it empty, we don't make no money. That's what I want those refrigerators in there. That's fine, but we need you helping us here, man, getting this stuff in. Ah!
got a day. And look how much we still got to do. I mean, thing is, this is like if, the, if, if they come in today, this, this isn't going to pass. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just trying to show the reality of what time we're at now. Yeah. We're, we're one day. If we get to the house, you're out of the clear. Okay. We're not to the house. The rest of us metal. Just about. Well, I guess what I'm saying is some, we got to start throwing metal away now. Because if we don't clear this space out, you're going to jail. That's the reality. I wish you'd lose that term. I can't help it. I well, know. I know, I know it sucks. That's but my alternative. But I know. I, I don't want to keep hearing it. Well, I, you have to hear it because you haven't. I don't think you realize it yet. I know. I've been there. I know, but I 90 know that days. judge better than you do. Yes, you do. I know exactly what he's going to say, and it ain't going to matter if I got the whole damn lot cleaned. He's still well, going to be an then ass. Why should I even come back tomorrow then? It's, it's just a waste of time, man. He's not going to let it go. I mean, he's going to jail. It's Thursday afternoon, and he's going to jail. He's not, I mean, he doesn't get it. He's on his own now. He'll go on his decisions, and he'll end up in jail. It's really a shame. It doesn't seem to bother you, the timeline. It doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, yeah, I understand there is a timeline, and I know the consequences are not away. I mean, you've done a great job, an amazing job. We're going to be clean to here today. Yeah. Your grandkids have been running this yard this weekend. Yep. That's kind of cool. That's it. Is that it right there? I like it. That's a good enough reason to me. You were here what? I was here Tuesday. Three days ago. Yeah. Four days ago. There were how many? 17 cars? Something, Something like, like that. that. It was full out here. I mean, yesterday, you couldn't see the fence yesterday. No, I didn't know there was a fence back there. Well, and there were all the tires. Gone. Yeah. So this whole yard will be open. Again, it's a start. Right. You know, it's not a finish. Right, and that's what the judge wants to see is, you know, serious effort. But yeah, you know, before this is all said and done, you know, this is, will have to be cleaned up. She wasn't quite as happy as I expected, but uh, it's a lot better than I expected. This isn't done yet. Yeah. Well, I hope this uh, that five days he did was all the jail time you'll ever have to serve. Paul's an awesome guy, man, and he did everything and more that I asked him to do. I couldn't have done it without him. I mean, he's pushed me a couple times. Most of them I needed. That's what it's all about. When it's all over with, they're gonna be all what's left. This is what Paul wants. He wants to have a place for his grandkids to play. This is why Paul has collected all of this stuff. In his mind, it was savings for his grandkids. It'll be great when it's done completely. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm Dale, a retired general contractor. On the outside of my property, I've got numerous cars. Some of them I bought at auctions. I drove most of them until they quit. Transmission went out or was slipping or something like that. Back it in the hole over there. Maybe I'll get a chance to fix it. I'm Darren, I'm Dale's youngest son. If you've never been to my dad's property, all you have to do is ask anybody where the house is that the guy's a hoarder, and they can point you right to it. And you'll know immediately when you get there just by driving up to it. Everything's overgrown, trash, vehicles, everything's just packed. I 
I've got buses, two of them. One of them I used in construction, and the other one is a uh, Air Force bus uh, that used to transport people. I've been using them for storage now. I've got a big forklift back up there that I bought to, to use around the property. I've got several boats. Uh, one of them, uh, it's upside down to keep it from rotting, and it's rotten. The semi I bought, that's been, oh, in excess of probably 15 years ago, I can't remember. You'll see there are a lot of piles of timbers. That's all of the decking that came off of the uh, Yukon River Bridge. I think there were seven trailer truckloads of it. It's back here, rotting. The inside is packed wall to wall, just a goat trail that you could walk through. My dad's not living in his house. He moved out into a trailer because he's just packed it too much. There's no living space. There's no living room. There's no electricity. There's no water, no septic, not something that you trade. It's just terrible. This is a monster work. We have 3,500 square feet of packed house. We have five acres that is full of everything from cars, boats, trailers, army vehicles, construction projects, drums of who knows what, gasoline. There's so many moving parts and components to this hoard. My mind's gonna explode and I don't know how we're gonna deal with it. The really cool thing about this horde is that we have the local army base, Fort Wainwright, where Dale used to be stationed, is sending over a group of soldiers to help us. This is gonna be amazing help that we need to get this stuff removed. Good morning, everyone. Good morning! Good morning. Oh my gosh. We have incredible resources here today. We've never seen anything like this. We've never seen a horde like this, but we have this help that's available for you, Dale. Thank you, thank you. Outstanding. Thank you. I'm impressed. It's for sure. Really amazing. Thank you all for your service and thank you for being here because as you can see, we would not be able to do this with just a handful of people. So the first thing we're gonna do is start right out here and work our way to the front door. Sound good? Yep. All right, you guys ready? Oh, yes, sir. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Good. We like to tell our soldiers that if you're a soldier, you're a soldier for life. We think that it's very important to give back to the community, to take care of not only soldiers that are within your unit, but past soldiers, present soldiers. I need a few cans. Holy crap. We can make quick work of this if you'll let them, but okay. we need some rules. Tools, survival stuff. Tools, survival stuff. The jacks, of course. Those are tools. Uh, right. Can they start going to work and leaving all your tools and generators set aside, and then we can reload? And then we can reload, OK. We're about 90% of the way through the garage, and all of a sudden, a beam breaks. With only a couple days left here, that doesn't give us enough time to brace everything, fix everything, and then clean the house. It's just not gonna happen. So uh, we kind of have to regroup and see where our time is gonna be best spent for the next couple days. It gives us a lot of time on the outside, but we still need to address where Dale's gonna live. When we found out that the house was dangerous, 
Uh, me and Maggie and Aunt Doris, we all got together as a family and decided that the house on the hill is the best option to put money into. Will you let us fix this house for you? Over the next couple of days, do as much as we can to get you a safe, functional space to live in, at least for the winter, so we know that we're leaving you in better condition than we found you. Yeah. Perfect. The good news is these soldiers, they have not only like cleared a path to your house, they've ripped out trees whole. They don't even need cutters. They ripped them out by the roots, but they just cleaned out that whole house about a half an hour. Amazing physical strength that they brought, amazing decisions that you made very quickly. I think we're absolutely able to make you a home now. Wow, look at that. Looks kind of like uh, somebody's house. Gee, this is cool. <laughs> amazing, just yes. amazing. I couldn't be happier. I'm glad he's got a place to live now that's out of that trailer and, and just to have it as his old house. Whoa! Oh my gosh! I remember this place. <laughs> wow. Yep. Oh, there's a picture of Joyce. How cool. When was the last time you slept in a queen size bed? I don't remember. Look! Look, look at your bed! Well, I think we're ready to move on to the last room. Okay. Holy cow, look at who's here! <laughs> this is awesome, you guys. You guys have about 40 people in this room you've never met from all over the country, 30 of them right here from the local uh, army base that are family to you in a, in a completely different way, okay? They love you, I know they do, or they wouldn't be here all week busting their ass like they have been. And I know Sergeant Lee has something else that he would like to uh, present to you. Dale, it's important that you understand that no matter, it doesn't matter how long ago you were a soldier that you served in the military, uh, we're still your family. You're a soldier for life. So the soldiers that have been here this week, the young men and women helping you out, haven't just responded to assist in the community. It goes a lot deeper than that. You are a brother, a brother in arms. You're a family. The soldiers at Fort Wainwright are your family, and we're always going to be here for you. When we were going through the horde this week, uh, we came across your ASU jacket, your, your Army uniform, and wanted to put a little something together for you. Wow. Oh That's Look nice. at that, Dad. These are the awards that were on your, your records saying that you were awarded. So we were able to get a hold of those, as well as you were an expert uh, marksman with your rifle and a marksman with a pistol. So we just wanted to include everything that you were able to achieve during your time of service. I'm just feeling kind of in awe. I kind of wanted to hide my face because uh, it got me. Uh, yeah, those GI yeah, guys got me. Uh, they could have shot me, and I wouldn't have cried, but they hit me in the heart, and uh, that got me. Dale, what are you thinking about? 
just appreciating these guys and y'all making it all possible. I, you know, I just expected to get my yard cleaned up. Uh, <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you for coming. Well, after everybody leaves, I've already rolled up my sleeping bag. I got my breakfast makings in a box. Me and Neshu come on home. My name is George. I'm 63 years old. I'm a registered nurse. The house itself is clean and um, normal, but we have a couple of rooms that are just uh, pretty much filled with stuff. I would guess that there's probably between five and 10 tons worth of miscellaneous everything there. My name is Debbie, I'm 54, and I'm George's wife. The items come from George bringing something home probably almost every day for the last 20 years. George is collecting projects, but yet he doesn't work on them. And he has so many projects that I don't know if he knows where to start at. Kind of devastating to me, especially because it was a yard and none of it was mine. I mean, I just felt like I never even contributed to any of it, but because my name was on the house, I would have to go to court. The problem is, is again, the officials wanting this to happen or, or else. My name is Tracy, I'm 31, and I'm George's youngest daughter. Everything in it, my parents handmade, built-ins, um, my mother stenciled, and everything was made with pride and with care and with love. And you look at that now and you're like, what happened? Thinking about it, it could even be like a loss of control in that situation and you over control in another way. And I think that may be part of what hoarding is about. Just you can control what you have, but you really don't. <laughs> He was a little messy in the beginning, you know, I mean, like a guy thing. The first couple of years, everything was just the way it had been before. There was a time when he had 10 projects and it was okay, and then he built a garage and he had a couple hundred projects. And then he filled the basement and, the, and his own four car garage, and he had a couple hundred more projects. And all of a sudden it was like, where do you look where you don't have projects? And how can you possibly, in one lifetime, complete any of those? My name is Matt Paxton. I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. George, everyone's here today because they love you. We want to help you out. As the day gets tough and gets challenging, remember, we're all here because we love you. George is a classic hoarder. We see it all the time. We call it the fixin' twos. He's fixin' to do this, he's fixin' to do that. In any hoarding situation, it really starts with good intention. Pastor Randy, will you lead us in prayer? I sure will. Okay. Thank okay. you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Moore. I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in anxiety disorders and compulsive hoarding. We have the very good fortune of having about 40 volunteers from the local church. All right, we ready to go, everybody? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah. We 
giving him that top barn, the top of the property, that's his limits. If it fits in there, he can keep it. If it doesn't fit in there, he can't keep it. I don't care if he fills it with chickens. He can do whatever he wants to do, but that's the space and the limits that he has. Tools over here. Well, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed, but so far it's going pretty good. We're clearing a lot of stuff out, so um, things are seem to be going pretty well. 45 minutes and we cleaned a barn. Yay. That's George started out really strong. Uh, I think we were all impressed at the decisions he was making. He was getting rid of some really big items. Things got a bit harder when we moved into the garage. Don't throw it away, then. But uh, I'm asking you, what does it go to? A plastic post. Which Do you we have, have where? I don't have right now. Why? You have to say goodbye to some stuff, Dad. You're keeping a lot. We have made a commitment to the family as a whole not to hoard anywhere else, oh. not to touch anywhere else. Mm -hmm. We're staying on a one acre plot of land, which is his to make decisions on. Okay. So I didn't consider taking stuff down and putting it in a trailer to we be We promise in not use to touch their any other property at all, just stay on our one acre, right? That doesn't sound like a great option to me. The only option you're willing to do is the option that we're not allowed to do. That's the only option you're willing to do. That doesn't sound like compromise at all. It's the only one that makes sense to me. Are you confused about why you're not permitted to use the other properties at this point, or? Yeah, I think they're being real pig-headed about something that would really simplify how this could be. Right now, you're being pig-headed. I'm sorry, you are. Imagine if I came in here and I told you, I'm gonna park my car here, Dad, and you're never gonna use your garage, ever, because I'm gonna keep my cars here. And I know you're my father, so I'm gonna do it. And you're gonna like it, and you're gonna be okay with it. For 60 years, and you're gonna be okay with it. You would say, absolutely not, there's no way in hell, get your car and put it in your own garage. Do you agree? Well, you have to put the stuff back in your room or whatever, but I just don't think it's a good way to do it. <sighs> okay. The whole weekend was about helping him and us loving him and supporting him. And the one thing, the one only guideline he had to stick by, he couldn't do it. Dump it, get out of the way. Here's what I know about change. Change is hard, it really is. And lasting change is even harder to do. Family's at church, we've got about three hours. Everything's happening very quickly this morning. We've, all the landscaping's going right now. Car's getting picked up. If I didn't accept people's advice, if I didn't listen to people who loved me and who said, hey Randy, guess what? You've got some blind spots. I would never grow. You see, change begins to show only when your faith is turned into action. Luke 9, 25, Jesus said this, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and himself is destroyed or lost? How was the service? Wow, awesome. Good? Wonderful. <laughs> All right, As always. you're gonna see here in the next few minutes why I wasn't there. We got a lot done this morning. If you look around, the grass is all See cut. That? Yes. We've got all, look at your front hedges. They're all trimmed back. Whoa, I didn't even. Um, you can see the house. Yeah. yeah. Debbie and George just got back from church. I was able to walk around the property and they were both really excited. They're really starting to see after all this hard work, they're seeing things follow through. You have a backyard now. <laughs> Good heavens. We're ready. That does That's look so different. Awesome. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's the issue. Your barn is almost full, and we still gotta go through the basement and the garage. So we've still got some hard decisions to make. Keep. Keep? Oh, that should go in the little playhouse. Even though it's broken? Yeah, we'll get it okay. fixed. Wheel? Um, keep. Keep and same with these. Keep. 
And when we got to his dad's uh, water boots, he told me that he had thrown them away, and then I found them tucked up in the shelf. So, these are your dad's boots. These have been used, they're, they're, they're leaking, yeah. but they were my dad's, I kept them. You don't keep your dad's boots because they fit, you keep them because you love your dad. Yes. George did get a little emotional today in the basement, which was good. I wanted to see him have some type of emotion other than happy. He finally, uh, he finally started to let go. They have served as a memory for me. At this point in time, I think I'll let other things serve as a memory. That was the thing that was needed for this. There had to be a change in my feeling and attitude towards all this in order for it to go in the first place. Here we go. Kind of feel yourself going with them. But I know there's other memories, and we had a lot of time together. The memories are still there. I'm proud of you. That's a big deal. You've come a long way in four days, man. Still thinking of my dad at the time, though. Make room for grandkids' memories, and <laughs> I have one grandson that looks just like my dad. <clears throat> I think that's a better memory. <laughs> I think George has discovered that he's been a bit too liberal in what he's taken on. He's now identified and prioritized a few main projects. I had a total of about four projects we discussed about, and first and primary one was getting the truck out, getting going on it, which a lot of these parts have been collected for years and years and years. George really likes that truck, and uh, he was excited. I mean, he's excited to get going on that project, and we got all the parts to it. I just found my plate for the truck. It's a 1932 plate. So I have to clean it up, repaint it. It's great seeing this thing. I haven't sat in it in quite a while, in many years, probably about um, 15 years. That's a big part of what this whole thing was about, too. That's like the saving grace of it all. I hope he stays focused on that truck, if that's the one project he focuses on. I, I think that'll keep him busy for a year or two. All right, so we got to pull this thing out today, and we got an hour to do it. OK. It's been more than 20 years since I actually saw that the complete truck or could get in the door to it. You. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> the most shocking thing that's happened is my dad's happiness is back. I mean, I can see the fire in him again. I can see him smiling and laughing and really enjoying himself. And he hasn't been like that in a very long time. You can park your car in the garage. I could open a door and not hit something? You, <laughs> you sure? can get in the house. Should I try it? <laughs> you can find everything, Dad. It's something to be able to see the corners of the garage again and to be able to pull two cars in. That was a good feeling. It's about time they were, that's what the garage was designed for. Outside citations, I think we've hit them all. The officers are going to come in and they're going to see that, the, you know, the family did every single thing they could. And I think he's going to get an ex at least an extension, uh, if not fully passing. Dave? We had a lot of fun. Yes. And uh, we got a lot of metal out. And we actually have a check for over $1,000 in metal money that you can put towards restoring that or whatever you want. And Thank you. Wow, you guys, I'll tell you, you guys were a lifesaver. We got $1,000 from some of the scrap metal. We probably got another 1000 coming tomorrow. And uh, I mean, George is, he's gonna make some money off of this. I think he's getting excited. He's starting to see the light now, and he's very pleased with what's happening. This is great. I do think it's crucial that George gets treatment moving forward. If he doesn't, I'm afraid we just gave him a whole bunch of space to fill up again. The real question is, when we're all gone and he's you know, on his way home from work and he can make that turn into the junkyard, is he going to do it? It was time to get rid of some stuff and just go on the memories, and I have a lot of them.
I'm Tim and my houses and properties are full of junk. 52 years of junk. The outside of my properties are full of a collection of eclectic projects. They are projects that I envisioned, that I saw the end of, but they didn't come to fruition. And there are things like cars, motorhomes, electronic equipment to be repaired, bicycles to be repaired, air conditioners for I don't know what now, welding equipment, engines, Volkswagen engines, Volkswagens. I have a pickup truck. I have a cement pumper. You'll find lots of metal and you'll find two sheds that are full of things. It's all stuff, stuff that had a value, may still have a value, but doesn't have a use in my life anymore. I have a history with local code enforcement. It started many years ago, like 30 years ago. Why do I think that that's possible? Because right here, less than a thousand feet away, they did that to a house. They tore it to the ground, put it in a dumpster and hauled it away. And all that's there now is weeds. I could be out on the street, but for the grace of God, there go I for the homeless person. I could be there with my wife. I am Vietnamina and Tim is my husband. Tim and I have been married for 52 years, and we met a year before, so that's sorry, very short dating time. When Tim asked me to marry, he said, you can have everything you want in the world, but one thing, please don't change me. And, um, well, I tried to change him, but it didn't work out. <laughs> How I would explain Tim's hoarding is when you're so good at so much, you have to drop the ball someplace. We can't all be perfect, so if we're gonna do something wrong, in this case, it was Tim's hoarding. The home that Villamina and I live in is pretty big. It's uh, about 2,400 square feet on the downstairs and another 1,700 square feet on the upstairs. And it is full of stuff. All that stuff, every bit of it is a project. Living in my house, it's chaotic. And then I freeze and uh, I'm not able to function very well. But that's been severe the last 15 years. In 2001, she uh, suffered catatonia. And it was a long uh, recuperation from that. Up until her illness, there wasn't any hoarding going on in the house because she wouldn't allow it. But when she got ill in 2001, then she pulled back. And, and then by about 2010, uh, she was so bad that uh, it didn't matter if I brought stuff in the house. Villamina, I, I believe her demeanor is more of a defeated individual than the very vibrant woman that she had been. And I can't wait to see a smile come back and 
really know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. When I try to help my uncle get rid of the stuff that he's collected, either through reorganizing or throwing it away, it's contentious, so we're always fighting. In regard to throwing things away, we are always butting heads, so and he has a tendency to create actually any possibility for any little thing that may be thrown away, he will have a use for that in some future plan. So you're always kind of fighting this, <laughs> this logical, I, you know, I, in a way logical, but also very <laughs> logical thing. So it's a constant battle. I have to keep reminding myself that I want to get rid of everything. I mean, even though there's going to be part of me that say, no, we got to keep that, we got to save that, oh, no, not that. But I really, I want to get rid of everything. Tim, you and I have something in common. We probably do. You look familiar. Well, well, there might be a couple reasons for that. But what I'm referring to is you're a psychologist. It's true. Right, right. Yeah. This is a really unusual situation because Tim is also a therapist. Albeit he's retired, but it's always interesting when I'm working with somebody else in the mental health field because the thought is he should know how to do this. Why is he in this situation? But I'm always having to remember that it's not about your profession or how smart you are because mental health issues can affect everyone across the board. Tim, you got a few big days ahead of you. Are you ready for this? Uh, never ready, but willing, more than willing. That's what we want to hear. You know, we always want to remind family members that it's not um, just about getting the house in order. It's about dealing with the psychological factors that are coming up. Yeah. So Corey, what's our plan? We have an auctioneer here. We're going to walk the property with the auctioneer. You can point out the things that might have some value and he can tell us what he thinks. Sure. Would it be OK while we're doing that to get my team moving and start oh, yeah, cleaning absolutely. out some of this stuff? All right, you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. All right. That would have some value. It's a condenser? It's a condenser and a compressor, right. hermetically sealed, never been opened. Right. So let me ask you a question. If you were to sell this today, would you sell this as brand new? Oh, uh, yeah, it is brand new. I'd tell somebody it's brand new and been sitting here for. But it's rusted. So? I you're, think what you're we're trying, trying to make to... a point. Yeah. What's your point? That this is not brand new, it's damaged, it's rusted. And I think that this is sometimes where you get stuck with your stuff. There are some things that I'm sure you know about. This, you don't. OK, so Ryan, so what you've seen through here, there's not a lot of value. I mean, where do we go from here? Is there stuff that you're going to take? At this point, no. There's nothing that we're going to take. Tim has what we call an overvalued ideation of his stuff. He thinks that they're worth more than they are. The things that um, Ryan, the auctioneer, looked at that he didn't take, are you going to let Corey and his team take those? Some of them, but some of them not. Philomena, what are your thoughts about that? Yesterday and this morning, he says, I want it all to go. When he gets like this, you, I can change him. Would you prefer that while all the manpower is here to lift these items and remove them from the property? Because the likelihood of someone purchasing those items is, is not real likely. It's not a good thing what you're doing to her. To ask her how she feels? It's not a good thing what you're doing to her. She's fragile. And I want you to respect that fragility. Tim, I am. It's no, her, you're we're not. checking in with her. That's okay. all we're doing. Well. If strong person this goes. I am surprised at Tim's willingness 
so far. I mean, the, the amount that we are removing from the back is a lot. I just hope that that momentum will continue. Yesterday, we had a conversation. Tim, you got upset. How are you doing today? It's all good. OK. I mean, from my point of view, we, we've made fantastic progress yeah. here already. I'm looking forward to what's going to happen across the street. And um, I can't be anything but grateful. We got rid of about 10 tons of stuff yesterday. Wow. I mean, Imagine that, 10 tons on the first day. It really is unheard of. So the plan for today, Tim, is we're going to go across the street where Nathan's staying at that property, and we're going to start cleaning out that yard. OK, I'm going to have some of my guys stay here because we're getting an empty dumpster delivered right now, and the rest will be over there with us as you make decisions. Does that part sound good? Sounds good. Let's get over there and get started, OK? Let's go. All right. All right. What about this trash can? Go. Let's see. Probably should keep the mop. Uh, this? Then we'll keep, yeah, keep that and keep this. This looks pretty gross. This lawnmower stays, but all of these mowers and pump, well, maybe I should keep the pump. This goes with the something we're saving. How much would you get for it? Probably $750. I would love to see one of these online in this condition, rusted and everything. For oh, no, you won't see it for that 750. It's got to be painted. It's got to be, you know, dressed this up. This is where your hang-up is, man. You don't understand my way of working. This is your way of working. I mean, your mind is your worst enemy, my friend. We're going around the pool, you know, one more time, making a second pass, but he's still holding on to way too much stuff. It doesn't even look like we did anything back here. I saw a... Um, what do you call it? A, a two by four, a 10 foot two by four. And it was going into the dumpster. And I'm wondering, do I need to be over here, you guys? Steve, I mean, what is so amazing when you look around here, look at how much stuff is here and tens of thousands of pounds, tons, have gone. And look at it still. Tim, why don't you come over and have a conversation with us, OK? So I just, my concern, Tim, is when code enforcement comes back tomorrow, this isn't going to be acceptable, obviously. We had a lot of issues with Tim getting him on the same page as us. You know, he wanted to keep so much more than he promised us in the beginning. It seems like every day it's just getting worse and worse and worse. When I see a brand new piece of two by four, 10 foot long, come over to come into this dumpster, I ask you to save usable materials. You see, I'm that, I looked at that piece of wood. It's harder than the nail itself, and it's warped. It's, now, what yeah, are you going to use it for? It's a perfectly good piece of wood, and you yeah, when you're using a nail gun, it doesn't matter that it's hot. I don't want to argue about well, that. Well, then don't. I need don't. to get this job then don't done argue. for you. Then don't argue. But use that means you want me to save the end off of that pallet. Don't be ridiculous, bro. No, you're being ridiculous. You don't understand that I know what helps me. Wouldn't you think I would know what helps me? This pile, these two yards, oh, bro, come don't on. help you. Come on, bro. They don't help Vilamina. No, bro, they don't, don't go there. You family? know that that's off. That's off. No. Yes. Yes. How many different times have we hey. come here and helped clean up? Uh, and twice. it's turned back the same way. Twice. And I let it happen, and I regretted it afterwards. But you know, it is what it is. Well, you're so, probably going to regret this. One second. Look in this room and give me a percentage of what you think is going to go. Give me a percentage. I'm working on it. I think we're probably going to end up keeping 50%. God almighty. And what are you going to do with 50% of this stuff? It's not going to make any change in this house. Yeah, it's going to be out of the house. Where? In your yeah. yard? 
for now, for until I get a no, different place no, for it. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to have code enforcement come tomorrow and have it worse than it was when they left a couple <laughs> days ago. What's the point? Tim, you got to save yourself, man. I can't do it. Have you take advantage of the couple days that we have left while we're here to make the most progress? Well, and if I don't we empty out progress. the house, that'll be the most progress. It's, it's, it's the wrong kind of progress. In your mind. We're fueling, not in my we're mind. fueling the disorder that no, you have. No, that's baloney. Unfortunately, it's not. Any attempt to help him understand that this is a mental health condition, that the way he's been doing things hasn't worked, and that we have an opportunity to help him to grow, to better understand why he's in this situation, he continues to just push back. He's not interested in changing. He's interested in holding on to his stuff. It's not like this is our first hoarding case. We know if we move a million things out here, they're going to stay here. One person is not going to go through all this and make sense of it. They can't. I'm not going to be forced into doing something that I know in my heart is not right. So call me a hoarder. I'm a hoarder. So Corey, we didn't come here just to relocate stuff. So where are we oh, at? Oh, goodbye. Absolutely not. We, we, we changed the plan a few times to meet your goals. Well, wait, you didn't have that plan with me. Plan no, was the plan when started I, when I originally years. met you, what was the plan? The I want to let started. it all go. Both yards, both okay. houses, empty and everything. I, do. I don't know what to say. Well, you but can say goodbye. But we're not going to move all this out, you and we're not going to fill this up. Then so code say enforcement goodbye. comes back. Say goodbye, and mm -hmm. I really appreciate you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Are you having regrets about some of the things that you let go of? I'm having regrets about the whole process. Do you want to expand on that at all? Uh, not really. Do you regret the work that we did do and got, I think the total number of dumpsters will be eight when it's all said and done. Taking eight dumpsters away, is that a positive? Did you hear what I said? I regret the process. OK. I regret the way you manipulate things. Explain how we manipulated you, because I'd love because, to hear that. Because, well, you've done it over and over again. You should know how you do it. You put stuff that goes in some barrels. You put stuff that stays, and then you say, rationalize for us why you keep this stuff. That's, That's not manipulation. manipulation. Well, sure That's questioning your way of thinking that has gotten you to this position. Well, and you, you can say that. There's no manipulation when I question why it's here and why you need it to sure, live a better, healthy life. manipulation when you lay that out like that and say, OK, instead of listening when I say what I want to do with I it. just want you to know that's our job here. Okay. We're not well, just thank you for doing your job. I want you to know you're doing a great job. By the way, I don't like the confrontation either. Well, I feel like just withdrawing and just let it take its course. Whatever happens, happens. What I don't want to do is, if you're going to be disengaged today, is continue doing anything. Because we're here to help you not just clean up, but learn and grow and change from this experience. And that's not going to happen if you're hiding in the house or disengaged even outside. Tim, your voice is important. And at this point, we don't want to further perpetuate a negative experience. And we've, we've talked already about how difficult it is to clean up this property in such a short amount of time. So we want to defer to you. Are, are you up for this, this last day? Yeah. I'm really glad to hear that. Let's get started. you guys we made it to the end as difficult as this process was we were able to remove right around 40 tons of stuff from both properties so that's huge it really is so officer o'connor's here from code enforcement she's already taken a look around so what do you think honestly just on first like <laughs> glance it looks so much better just on first glance it looks leaps and bounds better than before so you're happy with this property but there's one across the street we still got to look at right Let's take okay. a look. A little different? A little bit. <laughs> and this is after we took out a lot. 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a different look than the other property, so. So as far as the crisis of code enforcement being on him at this property, we're far from that being fixed. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you guys, we appreciate Ditto. having you out here. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. What a difference, Beautiful. Huh? Looks good. Thank very, you, Very, very nice. <laughs> when I walked into the kitchen and got a chance to look around and see the living room all cleaned up, it was awesome. Tim, I want to personally thank you because you were on the brink of kicking us out twice. <laughs> so True. You, you hung in there and it paid off. I hope you feel it paid off. While I'm disappointed in some ways, I am extremely grateful for what you have done. So there have been challenges all along in this process for me, but the biggest challenge for me was to realize that it wasn't just about me and what I wanted, but, uh, but about the process and letting it do its, its work. The, the journey with, with us is not going to end because we are going to offer you one of the organizers that was here to come back and continue to help you. And we're also going to offer you aftercare therapy. And we wanted to find out if you want to take advantage of these additional services that we want to give you. I have somebody already lined up. Oh, yeah? Um, well, yeah. we should meet with them, don't you think, hon? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. OK, yeah, we'll meet with them. What a blessing. Didn't turn out as well as I wanted, but it's still a blessing. Massive blessing. And I appreciate it so much. Brings a tear to my eye because I feel so blessed. Best of luck to you guys. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you very much. being a fan of hoarders and subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.